Next up, we, uh, we have got a brilliant guest. She's come all the way from Spain. I'm sure she's going to get a massive, rapturous reception as she uh, obviously worked in this market for such a long period of time. And now she is the big cheese at Finecast. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Nick Lewis on stage. <laughs> you took the long walk. Well, you know, I like to. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I right, should put that down there. Um, my disclaimer on this one is that originally I had 20 minutes that Justin cut down to 10. So I tried to negotiate him back up to 20 minutes yesterday. He gave me 15, so I'm going to settle on 17. So it will go over. Um, so, hi, as, as Justin said, my name's Nicola Lewis, Global CEO um, of Finecast. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here um, in my beloved Sydney two and a half years after I left to relocate to lovely Barcelona. Um, and of course, you see so many great um, friends uh, and colleagues faces in the crowd today, and I look forward to catching up with many of you as the day goes on. Um, the last two years have been, I'm gonna get this right, which one do I press? Mm -hmm. The big green one, okay. Perfect, that was easy. Um, so, last two years um, have been an absolute uh, blur. Um, and I said earlier at the, the breakfast, I kind of feel like I've been in the metaphorical eye of the storm. Um, and that's said in a really positive way. And that said in terms of being within a sector that is evolving at such pace and literally in every corner of the world. And whether that be Indonesia, India, Spain, Poland, Canada, Mexico. Um, it is literally non-stop. I get to see Justin way too often, um, and I was a bit disappointed, although, Franey, you were great to hear that you were in the top five presentation, and I presented at the same conference, and I wasn't, but anyway. Um, look, but I feel incredibly blessed to, to be able to do what I do on a daily and a, and a weekly basis, and to work with brilliant people. And that's because we're surrounded by something new, you know, something challenging and something really exciting. And TV is great, TV is alive, TV delivers results, and TV absolutely um, inspires. TV is also serendipitous um, in nature, and it's got the ability to deliver something to you that you weren't necessarily expecting, but that made you feel good most of the time, filled you with knowledge, left you content, and emotionally connected to the content you were consuming. And therefore, in some way, shape, or form, provided a value exchange to you for your time. But to maintain that emotional connection um, with you, whether that be from a content perspective or an advertising perspective, TV's got to continue to innovate. So as I said, over the next 17 minutes, which is now 15, Justin got that one. Um, I want to explore how we as an industry can amplify TV's superpower within the addressable world. To do so, I want to start with a hypothesis, something to prove out over time. Thinking back to Cannes last year, I was fortunate enough to be part of a roundtable. About 25 experts from brands, from clients, from media, and from creative. Um, and the roundtable was centered around the notion of us being in the golden era of TV. Rightly so, and during the roundtable discussion, the question was asked, are we in the golden era of TV? And interestingly, and I kind of feel in a positive way, the answer was no, but we could be. Um, the opportunity is right on our doorstep, and it's there for the taking. And so with that in mind, I did want to focus on testing the relationship between addressable advanced TV, the catch-all, whichever one you want to use around the globe, and creative messaging. And to explore how we, as an industry, should approach creative messaging to prove out the hypothesis. Addressable TV is facilitating a creative reawakening that will rebalance the performance equation. Now, many of you in the room will also be familiar with the great work undertaken by Peter Field, Karen Nelson Field, and Orlando Wood called Triple Jeopardy. Triple Jeopardy pertains to three interlinked threats generated when marketers ignore attention as a credible goal in their Marcoms strategies. 
Attention is important. It represents a gateway to building mental availability with customers, which is central, as many of us know in the room, to long-term brand building. However, however, there are three trends limiting the ability to create the right level of mental availability needed for that long-term brand building. The first is budget, and that being not accurately valuing platforms that build, um, sorry, not, uh, sorry, specific to budget, specific to di disproportionate level of budget being allocated to the sort of ads um, that aren't intended to build attention. The second key area is media planning, and that being not accurately valuing platforms that build attention, which in turn can put pressure on measurement models. And finally, creative work. Um, and that is creative work that lacks the elements required to leverage broad attention, i.e. too focused on left brain processing and therefore geared to short-term effectiveness. Now, each of these threats can be neutralized, but together they can have a catastrophic, catastrophic impact on effectiveness. A Group M and Finecast, we've been busily unpacking um, this notion of triple jeopardy to better our collective understanding um, and shaping our approach to planning, optimization and measurement, and thereby extracting max maximum effectiveness for our clients. We're also not alone in this room when we say we know that TV punches above its weight versus other platforms. And again, this is thanks to a lot of the work undertaken by Amplified Intelligence. No, Karen will be here later today. So the question is, are we leaving brand performance on the table? Um, and arguably, yes, we are. And therefore, as an industry, we have an opportunity um, to do more. Over the last five years as well, we've demonstrated um, effectiveness and value for our clients across a wide range of sectors via addressable TV. We've accomplished this primarily by optimizing media placements using proprietary data, technology tools across the entirety of the sales funnel from brand sales uplift, footfall, and website engagement metrics. Um, through these examples you can see on the screen, it's clear to see that as an industry we've made progress when it comes to driving media effectiveness standards forward. But the next frontier is creative message optimization. Exploring effectiveness data sets further has revealed an absolute universal truth. After brand size, the biggest driver of effectiveness is creative, typically ranking number one or number two in terms of performance. The right creative elicits emotion and engages both the left and right sides of the brain, achieving the best results when telling brand stories on TV screens that captivate audiences. But here's an interesting fact. At Finecast in January 2023, we look back on the total number of impressions that we had served globally. Um, 11 billion impressions served in 2022. However, when we looked at the number of those impressions that had any form of creative optimization, it was under 1%. To put that into context, that's across 14 markets reaching 340 million households. And honestly, at Finecast, I, I expect we're not an exception, and other partners who work in this space will see comparable results. This is an immense opportunity for us, again, as an in industry. And to have less than 1% of creatively optimized media in a medium that's arguably the best creative canvas in the household. That's the opportunity. And so this represents a collective challenge for us um, with two problems to tackle. Firstly, and as an industry, you could argue that we aren't doing enough and that lack of scalable tech solutions to enable creative messaging, whether that be on the side of clients, broadcasters, tech companies, et cetera, has previously inhibited progress. And secondly, in the age of addressability, we need to think about both resonance, right brain, more mental availability, long-term connection, and relevance, left brain, rational thinking, short-term impact. It's clear that there is room for improvement. 
And as I said, there's more we can do um, as an industry. But the good news is that we are discussing it in various pockets of the globe. And there is recognition um, that we have an opportunity to do more to enable enhanced creative messaging. So at Finecast, to kick, kick off that ambition, we've decided to partner with the best creative effectiveness business in the world, System One. Building on the work with Amplified Intelligence, we wanted to understand how addressable TV impacts um, attention, addressability, and creative to yield maximum performance for our clients. In an industry challenged by the previously mentioned triple jeopardy of attention, the System 1 study tackles some important questions, namely, what is the role of addressable TV to help brands grow? the business effects of their advertising. Do addressable TV audiences respond differently to TV advertising that targets towards them? And if so, what can brands learn about addressable audiences' response or responses to improve the addressable creative that they produce? And we're super excited about this study, and we'll be hosting a roundtable at the Martinez in Cannes in 2023, only a few months away. So what does good look like? And how do we formulate an approach or a framework um, to think about creative messaging and addressable TV? Um, and I want to do this through the lens of some of the great examples of creative work from around the world. It would be totally remiss of me to not showcase great creative in a presentation about harnessing the superpower of TV. Um, and I want to start with an ad from Honda in collaboration with Wavemaker Australia, working with the addressable content platform through WPP Partners Hogarth. With cleaner, quieter, and stronger power, get your garden on with Honda's petrol and battery lawn and garden range. In a nutshell, Finecast imported 359 Honda P retailer locations nationally into our audience planner. We have four weather-based visuals who are applied to the creative. Within the first 24 hours, 740 unique weather and location-triggered creatives went live, whilst 1,200 weather and location creatives were served and have been served um, to date. Really, really impressive results. The second result is actually a live um, creative currently running in the UK um, from the travel category for Jet2. Looking forward to next summer? Book your 2020 after an adult protected holiday now. Jet2 Holidays. Package holidays you can trust. So this notion of harnessing the power of creative messaging really came to life at a WPP conference that I was at um, a couple of months ago, during which WPP's global chief creative officer, that's a real mouthful, Rob Riley, got on stage and highlighted some amazing examples of creative work, during which he noted that technology is absolutely the, absolutely the key to creative success. But he stressed that it's important to have the right people, the right partners, and the right platforms. Um, that we need to constantly upskill our people, and that we need to expand our partnership ecosystem to build systems and frameworks to deliver value through creative effectiveness, while importantly, growing and learning together. And he said to do this, we must have creativity, technology, and humanity, and that's as a minimum, as a, as a baseline, if you like. Um, but to create the real magic and impact in addressable TV, this approach can then be added to additive and can be enhanced by media integration, nimbleness, and more recently, empirical evidence. So let's start by adding media integration into the equation. And with this, we've got an amazing example in the Cadbury Celebration campaign, which was an execution awarded a titanium lion in Cannes last year, created by our brilliant Wavemaker team in India. Cadbury Celebrations used AI technology 
to give celebrity ads turning star Rukan into a small business ambassador during the Indian festival season of Diwali. It's a brilliant concept and one that would undoubtedly shine on the big screen, leveraging the exponential growth in CTV in India right now with 45 million smart penetration forecasted by 2025. Where are you? Yes, I'm coming. I'm a hero. Look at this. This Diwali, you too, you can shop with your fashion of Emporium. And then, Empire Footwear. Look at the name. Just take the shoes from there. So that you can dance with your shoes. Look at all of them. Come on, the guests have come. What are you feeling, Mazi? Take your stylist chashma from the bagel of the heaven eye operation. And take your Siddhi Vinayak Electronics from the latest smartphone and take your mother's face selfie. What are you doing? Are you going to take it or not? Take it, man. Take your face from the Roshan Kirana. Take your face from the Roshan Kirana. So that with you, their face will be sweet with their face too. हमारे आसपास की जो दुकानें हैं, उनकी दिवाली भी तो मीठी होनी चाहिए ना। Again, you can see phenomenal results across PR, total ads created, ad views, and ultimately growth in business. So the next layer of the equation is to add nimbleness, and to illustrate this, I've turned to Belgium. Um, and Volvo. Um, this campaign was in answer to the cancelled Brussels Motor Show, Volvo's biggest sales momentum of the year, with 30% of the yearly sales target potentially lost due to the cancellation. Volvo pivoted, rethought their approach um, to displaying and selling cars, and they created the Volvo Street Configurator, the first app to use advanced AI to recognise configuration of every Volvo the consumer sees. It's a concept that fits perfectly and links perfectly to physical attraction with a digital commitment. Why am I showing you this case study? In the last 12 months, we've observed technological advancements that now enable brands to bridge the TV viewing experience with consumer and commerce experiences, which is absolutely new fertile ground and ground we are exploring with several um, clients across uh, a number of sectors globally. Finally, we add empirical evidence to the equation, evidence that allows us to really test out the hypothesis laid out at the beginning of the presentation, and that helps us as an industry create extraordinary work that delivers to a new golden age of TV. What you see here on the screen are addressable messaging benchmarks for programmatic um, social that have been developed by Group M's Wavemaker agency across all major categories. And that's both low value, high frequency, high value, low frequency value products and services. And what we've observed consistently is that when we are able to bring optimized media and creative messaging together, we see significant incremental gains on campaign performance with an average uplift of 24% CTR. And so we can start to prove out that effectiveness in creative messaging using an equation that incorporates creativity, technology, humanity, media integration, nimbleness, and of course, proof. And again, to bring this to life, there are two examples of clients that we've worked with recently. The first, a collaboration with Ogilvy Social Labs and Vans, importantly, bringing a new to TV client to the big screen in a big way. And finally to Germany um, and KFC's new products for vegetarian meat lovers and families to be shown to viewers located within a determined radius of one of the 177 outlets in Germany. 
Um, KFC's geographical targeting strategy used local and product-based data feeds with the creative messaging adapted and dynamically targeted to the viewer's location. Executing 523 individual 30-second ads, 20 seconds of which was dynamically optimized, and 10 seconds the brand advertising creative. And again, the results speak for themselves. Jetzt neu bei KFC. Chicken, auch ohne Chicken. Probiert jetzt unsere legendären Veggie-Varianten. Okay, so what does the future state look like in this world of creative message optimization? Importantly, it's not about changing our approach to creativity in TV. It's about enhancing the creative asset for the media placement. Um, and it's about thinking about how do our roles evolve, about how we best use technology to optimize storytelling. And I'm hugely optimistic, specifically, as we have some of the amazing ingredients to elevate performance. Best in cast production with the likes of Hogarth, AI um, with the likes of Satalia and Dragonfly, obviously data through Choreograph, and System 1, as I mentioned previously. The next step is to create global POCs in key markets around the world, the US, Canada, UK, Germany, um, testing and learning as we go to achieve that lofty goal of every single impression we serve to our clients will have media not only media optimization, but creative optimization. And that is fast forward to 2025, where we forecast serving about 60 billion impressions, 100% creatively optimized from a creative messaging perspective. So with this in mind, what do I want you to take away from this? It's to lean into innovative technologies, continue to encourage clients, brands, and colleagues to test and learn, combining optimized media and optimized creative to create better advertising experiences for brands. And let's help rebalance the value equation. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. That's all right. That's okay. Thanks, sir.